Hi, my name is Van. And in this video, we are going to talk about Plural Effusion. What is Plural Effusion? Plural effusion is a collection of fluid in the plural space. It is rarely a primary disease process and is usually secondary to other diseases. Normally, the plural space contains a small amount of fluid ranging from 5 to 15 ml. This acts as a lubricant that allows the plural surfaces to move without friction. Plural effusion is when there is excess fluid in the plural space. This is either because there is too much fluid being produced by the body due to a transitative or exudative effusion, or it could also be due to the lymphatic vessels unable to effectively drain the fluid, causing lymphatic effusion. Transitative effusion occurs when there is too much fluid leaving the capillaries, either because of increased hydrostatic pressure or decreased encotic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure, specifically blood pressure, is the force that the blood exerts on the walls of the blood vessels. Consider it as a pushing force. One of the most common causes of an increased hydrostatic pressure in the lung capillaries is heart failure. When the heart is weak and is unable to pump blood effectively to the body, it backs up in the pulmonary vessels causing an increased pressure. This mechanism forces fluids out from the capillaries going to the pleural space causing accumulation of fluids, or what we know as pleural effusion. Uncotic pressure results from the inability of large solutes such as albumins to move across the capillary. By osmosis, Fluid moves from areas of low solute concentrations to high solute concentrations. Fluids, therefore, flows out from the capillaries and into the pleural space when there's a decrease in cotic pressure in the blood vessels. Two common causes of low oncotic pressure are cirrhosis, where the liver makes fewer proteins, and nephrotic syndrome, where proteins are lost during urination. Exudative pleural effusion is due to the inflammation of pulmonary capillaries which causes them to be more leaky. Larger spaces between endothelial cells allows more fluids, immune cells and large proteins such as lactate dehydrogenase, an enzyme found in most cells, to leak out from the capillaries. There are various causes, some of which are trauma, malignancy, inflammatory conditions like lupus, or an infection like pneumonia. If the underlying cause is due to an infection, it is also possible for the infection to spread to the pleural space. Lastly, there can be a lymphatic pleural effusion called chylothorax. In a chylothorax, the thoracic duct is blocked causing lymphatic fluids to accumulate in the pleural space. The most common cause of chylothorax is when the thoracic duct is accidentally damaged during a thoracic surgery. It can also be caused by tumors in the mediastinum that pressed up against the thoracic duct, causing blockage. Usually, clinical manifestations are caused by the underlying disease. For pneumonia, the person may experience symptoms such as fever, chills, and pleuritic chest pain. Whereas for persons with malignant effusions, they may experience dyspnea, difficulty lying flat, and or coughing. Some diagnostic procedures include physical examination, chest x-ray, chest CT, and thoracentesis. This confirms the presence of fluid. In some instances, a lateral decubitus x-ray is obtained. For this x-ray, the patient lies on the affected side in a side-lying position. This position creates a visible fine line separating the air and the fluid in the image. Pleural fluid is analyzed by bacterial culture, gram stain, acid fast bacillus stain for ruling out tuberculosis, red blood cell and white blood cell counts, chemistry studies. Cytologic analysis and pleural biopsy is also done to check for malignant cells and pH. 
Intermittent thoracentesis is used for rare patients who has slowly accumulating effusions that only requires drainage every few months. TIPC are soft silicon tubes that allow people to manage SOB from recurrent malignant pleural effusion. Talc fluoridesis is sterile talc mixed with saline inserted via tube to cause irritations in the linings of the lungs, thus preventing fluid buildup. Pharmacologic management of pleural effusion depends on the condition's etiology. Nitrates and diuretics are commonly used for congestive heart failure and pulmonary edema. Antibiotics are commonly used for pyranemonic effusions and empyema. Lastly, pulmonary embolism is usually treated with anticoagulants. Surgical management includes surgical insertion of pluriperitoneal shunt and pleurectomy as shown in the video below. Patients with pleural effusion tend to have a decreased lung expansion. As a result, the breathing pattern becomes ineffective. In our nursing interventions, we should monitor and record vital signs. This is to obtain baseline data. We should assess breath sounds, respiratory rate, depth and rhythm. The rationale of this is to note for respiratory abnormalities that may indicate early respiratory compromise and hypoxia. We should elevate the head of the patient to promote lung expansion. We encourage the patient to perform a deep breathing exercise to promote lung expansion. We should provide a relaxing environment to promote adequate rest periods to limit fatigue. And lastly, we should administer supplemental oxygens as ordered. This is in order for us to maximize oxygen available for cellular uptake. We should explain thoracentesis to the patient prior to the procedure. We should tell the patient to expect a stinging sensation from the local anesthetic and feeling of pressure when the needle is inserted. Through this, the patient will be able to know the procedure and can make the patient more cooperative when the procedure will be started. Another consideration is to instruct the patient to tell him to tell you immediately if he feels uncomfortable or has difficulty of breathing during the procedure. The rationale is that if DOB occurs, it may require postponement of procedure. The nurse should reassure the patient during thoracentesis. The patient should be reminded to breathe normally and avoid sudden movements such as coughing or sighing. Providing reassurance to the patient can relieve the anxiety that may occur during the procedure. Ensure tube patency by watching for fluctuations of fluid or air bubbling in the underwater seal chamber. Record the amount, color, and consistency of any tube drainage. Continuous bubbling may indicate an air leak. For talc installation, pain management is a priority and the nurse should help the patient in assuming positions that are least painful. However, frequent movement is important to facilitate adequate spreading of the talc. The nurse then should assess the patient's pain level and administer analgesics as needed and as prescribed. For outpatients with pleural catheter, the nurse should educate the patient and the family about the management and care of the catheter and the drainage system. The prognosis of the patient with a pleural effusion depends on their underlying condition. If due to heart failure, cirrhosis, or malignancy, the effusion is likely to recur. 
However, most patients with a pleural effusions have no long-term complications. With proper and prompt intervention, the patient will most likely have a good prognosis. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed learning in my care. Don't forget to leave a comment down below and subscribe to this channel for more educational videos. Thank you.